Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Beaver Banter Podcast. I'm Nick Daschel and I cover Oregon State football for the Oregonian and Oregon Live. We're here to t- talk about another disappointing loss. Um, Oregon State falls to San Jose State 24-13 in Research Stadium. It is the Beavers' fifth consecutive loss. Uh, <clears throat> it looks like Oregon State's running out of hope for bowl eligibility. it will need to win two of the final three games to secure a, a postseason opportunity. Joining me, as always, is former Oregon State defensive end Isaac Hodgins. Isaac, how you feeling after yesterday? Well, despite how nice me and you look this fine afternoon, uh, we're, we're me and Nick are mourning right now after that Beaver loss, but um no no wait hold on i'm a reporter so i don't really mourn <laughs> wins or losses i root for stories well, yeah so. i mean look, you're, looks can be you're perfect people. it's perfectly are, acceptable for you to root and root and feel bad or feel good or however. right okay yeah yeah sorry i sorry about that the the media has rules yeah i i am mourning i'm i'm sad as an as an alumni and you know proud oregon state former football player but um you know, there are still a few games left to reach that bowl eligibility. We're right there. I think that at the end of the day, that, that's that got to be the goal. And I, it's a little lofty right now, but um, I think it's the best thing for the program. I think yeah. Think that. Well, let's talk about a couple of good things first before we get started into the, to whatever, wherever we're going to go here. But yeah, you know, your brother was called up today by the Giants. That must have been exciting. Did you know yeah, that was coming? Yeah, he was coming to Germany or? this morning, so. Um, I'm actually back at the parents' house today and hanging out with the nephew and the niece, and we're watching them in Germany. It was at 6.30 this morning is when it started. So, um, yeah, it was it was good to see him out there pursuing his dreams and doing well, getting some good when, key when, blocks when did in. You know, when did you know he was coming up? Uh, it was during the week. Um, I think Slayton was down, um, so they, they, they brought him up. He's been, he's been up for a few games, so it's, it's good to see him getting, getting some action here. Yeah, what's that? What's that like to watch somebody in your family playing in, in an NFL game? You never, you never got to see your dad obviously playing. Yeah, I, don't think I, I saw my dad play a few games. I don't know. It's just kind of growing up in a football family. It's just kind of normal, you know. I mean, I I remember when I was a kid, we would go to the movie theater. We see Larry Fitzgerald there, and we're like, "Hey, Uncle Larry!" You know, it's like it was just normal to us. But um, you know, it is surreal to kind of see him out there on the on, on the big stage doing well wait i didn't know that larry, larry fitzgerald is related to you well he played uh my dad played with the cardinals for a few years so um, oh he was un- uncle as in as in yeah, uncle like we, you, yeah, you, we you knew him as an uncle okay. right like he's i didn't he's think i missed that us. so like my nephew has like my nephew has a bunch of you know uncle isaiah mckenzie uncle you know whoever he he doesn't know yeah, you know I mean? yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's um, living a good life. Yeah, the other thing, and this this doesn't really hit close to home at all, but hey, Oregon State's basketball team's off to a two and zero start and God, they look good. I mean yeah. I mean they've looked really good. Were were you guys much into basketball as football players? I mean, me personally I wasn't, but I mean Jaden Grant, obviously Noah Tongiai, like these guys are like, Oh, if I wasn't playing football I'd be be on the basketball team right now or and then it's it's funny all the football players think that they have a shot in the nba or whatever it may be so um i was just a ugly defense lineman so we we kind of we weren't the best at basketball you had you had no game I tell i'll tell you, you what though tyler volton man he's uh he's he's pretty good at basketball there's some old linemen who are pretty good at hoops i think blake brandle was good at basketball. he was super good um yeah i saw i saw blake play in uh, high school yeah he's good Catholic. Yeah, he was pretty good, but the best player on your team was was Tegan Quitariano. Oh yeah, Tegan. he he was he. I think he could have. I don't know if he. I don't know if he could have played at Oregon State. I think he might. He could have given it a try, but he certainly could have played at like Western Oregon or yeah. or a place like that. He would have been a star at a place like that. I, I do know our team took our team took a lot of pride when uh, we would go to the uh, memorial, or not the memorial, Union, but go to the you know the the gym on campus and we'd we'd have a few of our guys play a few of the men's basketball team and they would come back like oh we beat we beat the men's basketball team in a in a five on five you know so he's everyone thinks that there's a they're a basketball superstar i don't know i i used to have a running uh running uh 
I don't know what, what you ever want to call it with Jalen Moore because Jalen thought he was something oh, special. Man. Don't get started with player. him. <laughs> and 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 you know I, he kept telling me he was the best player on the team, and I said, uh, "No, you're not." Tegan yeah. Quitariano would put you into the stanchion. He thinks he, he should, should be. He, he thinks he should be on the Denver Nuggets right now. I promise you. No, I know. He, I, I mean, I, I would put any amount of money he wanted down on Tegan <laughs> over Jalen and 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 Jaden Grant as well. I mean, those two were pretty good high school players but yeah it was always funny to hear him tell me how good he was at basketball i mean talk about a rebuild program i mean the men's basketball team what two three years ago i don't think they they had like two people on their team because everyone just hit the transfer portal or was just gone and i mean looks like they're rebuilding to start two, off to two three years game. ago a lot they, they they got nine new players on their team this year. They, yeah, they gutted it pretty much no, I, this last. I just year. remember I don't know if it was last year or, or two years ago, but like I I would come into the weight room and the basketball team's working out. I'm like, where are they? They're like, oh, they're right there. There's two guys, and I was like, what? Yeah. Like this is insane. Yeah. But I, I assume none of the basketball players ever pretended that they were good at football. Oh yeah, no. I mean, come on now. Yeah, it's just it's just a different mentality, you know. It's, I, I, I still get sad sometimes the defensive line kind of place where we warm up and do our drills and stuff is right next to the to the uh, basketball practice indoor facility or the facility. And, uh, you know, on like a cold, rainy day in the middle of November, you're just sitting out here just getting rained on and it's cold. And I just hear dudes in there warming up for practice, shooting some threes in a nice, warm AC building. Wow. I just get jealous, man. It's just. Ah, I so, get jealous. I'm not gonna lie. Could you dunk? No, nah, I couldn't dunk. I was it's too short and too fat. You know, if you're gonna be short, you gotta you gotta lose enough weight to be able to get up there. You know, how about how about Isaiah? Could he dunk? Yeah, he could dunk. I mean, all these guys on the team were like, oh, I could dunk. It's like, dude, you're six six and have a seven foot wingspan. I hope you could dunk. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, you're. We had dudes on the defensive line. They could dunk, and their vertical was like twelve inches. I was like, dude, come on, get out of here. I remember some. Didn't you guys have something like in fall where where you did some sort of free throw thing early early yeah. on? And Jonathan, didn't Jonathan shoot free throws or something like that? And he was pretty good at it. I don't remember what the whole. Yeah, actually, story we actually won a pair of uh, men's basketball shoes from that. We did like a in the summer. We did a three a free throw comp, uh, competition. It was like it was just knockout basically. We played knockout. Yeah. I don't know if you played that game before, but yeah. oh yeah. I'm not that old. Okay, um, I don't know. You guys could have called it something different. I don't know. Yeah, that, that game's been the, around forever. You know, Portland but, or whatever. Yeah. All right. So, well, we might as well get to the game. Um, where do yeah. we start here? We could only um, stall for so long. There is. It's. it's <laughs> yeah, you can only run out the clock on this game. Um, I guess we'll just start with opportunity. You know, we've talked a lot about. You know, you got to stomp on your opponent when you got the chance. And Oregon State had the chance in the second half, and they they blew it. I mean, there's just no getting around it. It was thirteen to ten. They they stopped San Jose State on on downs, take the ball down inside the five, and get zero out of it. I mean, it just felt like it just felt like that was the game right there where they had a chance to take a double digit lead and it didn't do it. Yeah, it's just I mean. I heard it because I was watching the game on on television. I would I heard the dudes on the San Jose State sideline like we got to stomp on their throats, like don't let them breathe. We got to close this game out, like basically saying things that I'm like, man, that's what we used to say when <laughs> we were beating another team. And um, yeah, it's just kind of you just hit the nail on the head of like it was just missed opportunities. Of I mean, you there's no you can't put these drives together and then fumble the ball. You can't put these drives together and then get nothing out of it especially when it's a one score game um that yeah. i think i watched the interview after with coach bray too and he said the similar words of you can't you can't trade seven for three points you know or zero points. Right. I, I thought in a similar vein the opening drive was just as about uh, just about as bad where i thought that was the worst know, one to be honest where you where, where where you where you get a three and out on defense i mean you're just praying for your defense to show up they show up three and out you hit a 40 yard pass get immediately in the scoring range and then three plays later it's a fumble and the yeah. drive's over in my opinion I, I that's how that happens but is it a lack of focus is it just was it just a great play by the defensive guy or 
or or, or I what? I just think it was just bad ball security. I, I don't know if Hank has Hank fumbled a few times before this season. Yeah, yeah, he's had a few. Yeah, I think it's I think it's starting to kind of develop as a bit of a problem. I even saw in some plays he's like on his way down to the ground and the ball's hanging out here, and I'm just like, man, it's just not not good ball security. And I think it was just that it was just not good ball security, and that's just a fundamental like. As a yeah. running back, you got to be dreaming of holding the ball high and tight. You know, that's some of the worst feeling, right, is when, when that ball gets knocked out. Like, my dad played fullback, um, and he would say that was the worst feeling as a running back when he was in college. The ball gets popped out, and these defenders are on top of you. You could see the ball, and you're trying to grab it, but your arms are pinned to your body because there's people on top of you, and you're just like, yeah. your life just flashing before you. You're just like, no, I got to get that ball. And it's, I mean, that's that in my opinion was like that kind of set the the tempo for the whole game i mean you get and that was the biggest thing i was seeing is there's when i watch oregon state football games when i'm watching their team there's just no cohesion it doesn't seem like it's a team almost it just seems like everyone's kind of individually it's like defense is operating separately offense is operating separately and then it just there's no cohesion it feels like of like this is this is a team and we're going to it's just like someone does good on one drive, and then the next drive, the offense blows it. And then the defense does good, or the offense does good, and then the defense blows it. It's just no cohesion. And I don't know if that, that's just been something that hasn't clicked yet for this, for this yeah. 2024 Oregon State Beaver team. Um, so there's been, I would say during this five-game streak, um, I want to say it's been, God, what are, no, I keep saying five game losing. It's a four game losing streak. Okay, four game losing streak. But over the last five games, there's been twelve turnovers. Yeah. Um, I remember during the Smith years, that was they didn't even get to that number in a season on a couple times. It, it felt like during they they really valued the the uh, the ball. You know, it was really take turnovers were really a big deal and. I don't say they're not with this team either, but how, how do you how do you stop it? I guess. Yeah, I mean, it just has to be a focus. Like it has to be an intentional focus. <clears throat> I mean, I remember there were there were there were games where we would either have bad ball security or we would just have no takeaways as a defense. That next that next practice where we came in, we were focused and hammering that. Like we would. The whole first 15 minutes of practice, we're working on ball security, like offense and defense alike. Like, I remember one time our ball security got so bad that the whole team, we all did ball security drills because even you, if you're on the football field, you have the ability to have the ball in your hands. So what's the yeah. worst thing as a defender is when you get a turnover, then what? You give the ball away. So that's the, that's the worst thing that could happen. Um, and so I, they just, you just got to drill it and you got to drill it religiously like it's got to be a religious practice of your team to focus on ball security and yeah. and it's got to be a religious <laughs> drilling into your quarterback's head we're going to make good decisions with the ball and I, it just feels like we're in survival mode at this point of the season and when you're in survival mode you're you're not focused on the basics yeah. the fundamentals you're, yeah. you're you're just trying to breathe so defensively um <clears throat> Excuse me, Oregon State held San Jose State to 17 points. So, I mean, that's good. What what did you I guess what did you like defensively from what you yeah, saw? Yeah, I yes. mean, I like any game where you hold a team to 68 rushing yards. I like that. <laughs> any defense likes that. I mean, you hold a team to under 100 rushing yards. I don't care if they don't throw if they don't run the ball a lot or anything like that. That's a good That's a good game defensively. And then when you take into consideration the other touchdown was a pick six. Like they put on, you only gave up ten points defensively. That's good. Well, um, well, it was that, seventeen. They gave up. Tw they gave up twenty four. It was seventeen points. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, the defense that's one point. Um, but at the end of the day, I just thought defensively. Um, I th I saw spurts of of things that looked good, like batted balls. I think there were two big time batted balls. Like Samisi yeah. had one. And then Melvin had one on that fourth down. Um, and then I I just think that, I think in the run game particularly, what I didn't like is too, 
is there was one play where they scored on a running touchdown where there was, it was just a hat on a hat offensively. Offensively, they got one person on one defensive player, and that happened across the board, and they ran in for a touchdown. Like, there was nothing schematically they did wrong as a defense, but it's just defensively, if you go a hat for a hat, meaning if an offensive lineman blocks me and I allow him to continue blocking me, I lost, and he won. Like, you have, someone has to get off of a block and, and win. You can't yeah. go one for one. And that's what this defense is doing too many times. And then it's just little, it's the little things I'm seeing, just the missed tackles. You know, I, I think it was like one of the first, the, the second drive San Jose State had, where it was just a safety came down and missed the tackle and the, the dude ran for 30 extra yards. It's like, dude, that can't happen. That It's just, we've got to drill these fundamentals and it's just got to be second nature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm getting a lot of comments from fans and, and whatnot about the secondary, you know, not being all that great, but I, I just keep going back to, it doesn't, I don't care how good your secondary is. If you don't have a pass rush, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, (laughs) It's just, you can't cover a guy. You you just can't cover a guy long enough. If he, if the quarterback stands back there patting the ball, Uh eventually you're going to get exposed. Yeah. And that's kind of the cohesion I was talking about. I was just watching the game. um, And I would just see like, there'd be some plays where the pass rush was good. Like I saw some take a guy bull rush him, got off. And then he's hitting the quarterback as he's throwing the ball, but the quarterback just gets the ball off and it's a 50 yard uh, pass reception. Number three. And I'm just like, ah, like just the cohesion needs to be there of where your pass rush, and your secondary is working together. And it doesn't seem like that's happening. It just seems like either one's doing good and the other is not. And it's it needs to be at the same time. And you've got to you got to win your one on ones. Like I think Coach Bray said it. Like they 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 didn't plan on bringing a lot of pressure because the ball's out quick. Well, as a defensive lineman, you're not going to be able to get a pass rush if the ball's out in you know 1.5 seconds or whatever maybe. But you also, you're, those few opportunities you do get where you get a true drop back pass, you've got to get back there. Um, and I'm just seeing a lack of, I'm seeing a lack of edge rushing. Um, I think that's got to be the point where they got to focus. It's like, we got our edge rushers. We got to get some edge rushers in there who could go get after the quarterback. You're just not Yeah, I was going to ask about the pass rush. I mean, it was, I mean, let's be honest, it woof. I mean, it was, it yeah. was. It was not there, and it's and and obviously you you point out what Trent was saying about the quick quick passing game, you know, because he was asked why why not more blitzes. Um, I feel like that's always something fans go to. Well, why don't you blitz more? You know, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not always the answer. If, if, if blitz if blitzing always worked, everybody would do it. They're, you're exactly. giving up something when you blitz, but but <clears throat> but on the other hand. I mean, to go with three and four guys rushing the quarterback, that wasn't working. So it just felt like he got to do something different because there was too many times where he stood, where Egat, the quarterback, stood back there. And, you know, I know they want to get the ball out quick, but they took a lot of shots downfield. They took more shots downfield than any any team, I think, as, as the Oregon State's faced this year, especially in yeah. the first half. They took a lot of shots. So it wasn't like he could just stand there for a second. He was back there for three seconds, four seconds, sometimes four, and they couldn't get to him. Uh, zero yeah. sacks. And that's the that's the frustrating part is, like, what do you do as a coach? Like, do I, do I send people? Do I – because, it, I mean, I was watching – they did one blitz where they're, they're sending, like, a, a dog blitz of a linebacker up the middle. Um, and it just like it just didn't look right. Like, it, 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 I believe it was for I, I believe it was Melvin, but he was blitzing from depth, and he blitz and he, the ball snapped, and then he triggered on his blitz, and he's like, "You're five yards away from the ball. Like, you're gonna you're not gonna get there in time. Like, the, just the timing is off. There's just just a lot of things. I think detail wise are just kind of off with with the Oregon State Beavers right now. Like, whether it's with your blitz timing or it's with you know, hey, we got to get off of, like, just the fundamentals of football. Like, we got to get off a block. Or, hey, like, if this wide receiver catches, catches the ball, like, 
let's take a good angle and make sure we get him on the ground. You know, I know he caught the pass for 15 yards. Let's not let him go for another 25. And it's just it's just poor tackling and just poor fundamentals is what I'm kind of yeah. seeing, honestly. So offensively, um, you know, the running game kind of reemerged yesterday. Um, you know, Hank went for over 100 for the first time in three or four games, and he's getting close to 1,000 yards this season. Um, that's, I mean, yeah. Oregon State, I think there's been 18 guys that have, that have hit 1,000 yards, so he's – I mean, he should easily hit there, and let, you know, unless he gets hurt or something, he's he's pretty close. So, so and then Saladin Allah yesterday, he had his best game, you know, Impressive. by far as yeah. as a freshman. He he went nine carries, sixty eight yards, and he looked pretty good. You know, it, when when he when he was carrying the ball, look, he looked the most confident he's he's been all season. So, I mean, that part of the offense I kind of like, you know, but yeah, I don't know what. <laughs> Did you see anything different from the running game yesterday, or or um, just um, anything anything remarkable about what you saw that from that standpoint? Yeah, I mean, I I what stood out to me was Saladin Allah. Honestly, um, I I think his biggest thing is just confidence. You could tell like he he would lose his footing a few times. Like he'd be out in the open and he just it, he just didn't know what to do. You know what I mean? Like he just felt kind of uncomfortable in that situation but man like when he felt comfortable when they were i mean i think they went to it a few plays back to back where they're just doing outside pitch there's like bro go run like catch the ball stretch the field and get upfield um and he was doing well like he was you could tell um that he's an athlete and he's got some he's got some juice to him um yeah i think if i'm a if i'm a coach looking at that i'm like all right let's let's start feeding him the rock a little bit more start getting him more confident whether that's a practice, whatever you got to do to kind of get him confident and feeling like, all right, like this is like our guy who's next up, who's coming up, you know, yeah. next year and can help this year as well. Um, right. So I, I, I really liked what I saw from him. That was, that was encouraging. So the, um, Oregon State made a change of quarterback to Ben Galbranson. Um, what did you think? Did you think uh, it made a difference? I think it did. It was just. Yeah, I mean, again, I come back to the cohesion thing. It's like 40-yard pass and then fumble. You know what I mean? It's like I, I'm coming back to, like, great throw, pick six. Like, it, it's the cohesion. It's the consistency. That's kind of what we're missing right now, just, like, being able to put a drive together and now finish. Like, there were three team rules we had uh, under Coach Smith. It was start fast make good decisions and finish everything like finish. And we just had a problem finishing. Um, but man, there were spurts in there where it was just like, man, that's a tough throw. And that's a good throw. Like, great. And that's kind of, I just wish that this change had happened a little sooner to where now, if we're at this part of the season, it's not like Ben is a new quarterback. It's like, he's been doing this, you know, he's, he's been leading the team. And I think that's kind of the problem is like, you know, if I'm on that Oregon State team, I'm kind of like, what, what's going on? Like, we just feel like we're floating in limbo because we don't know who's our guy. Like, who who are we rolling with? You know, we are we? It feels like we're still in fall camp almost. Like, we need some solidified things to start moving forward. And I wish, I wish that move had been moved had happened sooner. Personally, yeah. The question, I, I mean, the question won't get asked to Trent until tomorrow. But I mean, it's my assumption that. Ben is going to continue to be the starter. I mean, would 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 you be would you be concerned if he if he said, "Oh no, we're you know we're looking at everybody this week, and we'll make a decision at the end of the week." I mean, do you need to say Ben Gobertson's our quarterback? He's our guy. Yeah. Or 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 is it okay to open it up again? No, I think at this point, I think at this point, he's our guy. This is who we're moving forward with the rest of the season. Like, I mean, because let's be honest, like, it's, that's tough. Like, to come in as a quarterback, what, was, what, we're, we're going on to game eight, game, right? Game eight, game nine? That was, that was game nine yesterday. Yeah, we're going on to, we just finished game eight. Like, come on, like, it's, <laughs> it's, that's hard to come in where it's just like, man, you guys didn't even have me as a second, you had me as a third string quarterback. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And so, like, you got to let him get his footing, but it's like, this has got to be your guy. I mean, if, yeah. if there's still a question, 
I think if at that point there's still a question, that just shows you kind of like it's hard to be led without a leader. You know what I mean? Like you kind of need a guy who everyone can look up to. Like, all right, that's that's our guy. That's who we're rolling with. That gives you confidence as a player and as a part of a team. You know, no matter what it is. Yeah, there, I mean, there's obviously some limitations to when you play a guy like Ben at quarterback because he's he, he's not going to run much, and and I know that's part of the offense is the, the mobility aspect, but he's not going to be able to give you as much of that as Giovanni, and certainly not Jabari Johnson. But yeah. but as a passer, he seems like you know he's he's clearly the 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 number one option. So. Um, you know, and then yesterday the, the the Beavers had ten possessions. Eight of them went past midfield, and they got thirteen points out of it. And that's just—I mean, there's just so many things you pick out of this thing and go. It, it, it's like they weren't that far away from winning by three touchdowns yesterday. Yeah. Yet, it's it's just like because they could have if they just kept some drives going because they were moving the ball mostly. I mean that. That's what I'm kind of, I just keep coming back to that. It's like, we're moving the ball, we're moving the ball, we're moving the ball, and it's like, all right, kick a field goal. Okay, zero points. Like, that you've got to be able to move the ball and get something from it. Like, it can't just be, you get all the way down to the five-yard line, the 10-yard line, you get into the red zone, and you come up with nothing. Like, that's, you're not going to win a single game the rest of the season if that's that's what's going to keep happening. And I think yeah. it's just got to be like, all right, guys, we got our group, we got our crew, let's settle down, okay? Let's settle down and do the little things right, be consistent. Let's t- Defensively, we're not asking you to be superstars. Make tackles in open field, win your one-on-one, get in the quarterback's face, make the internal clock in his head speed up a bit, and cover for three seconds. That's it. We're not asking you to be any, do anything step special. We're not asking for shutouts. Like, just do your job. And I think if that could be the message going forward of like, hey, we got our group, we've gone through our downs, now let's start rising up again here. Get to a goal yeah. game and, and and salvage something of the season. Yeah. Obviously, the play of the game was the interception by, by the corner, by the San Jose State quarterback, cornerback on, on, on Ben near the, on the, at the 15. Um, at first blush, when I saw it, it looked like he just threw it right to Harvey. But then I watched a little bit of video, and it does look like Reddix was in the area, and maybe he slipped a little bit. Um, I don't know. What did you see on that interception? Yeah, I mean, I was kind of like you. Like, I'm like, just just like, what happened? I mean, it's kind of hard to tell what happened on that interception. You don't know whose fault. It, like, we always know, like, hey, the quarterback threw the ball. Um, so it's his fault, right? But we don't know what the route concept was. We don't know what he was expecting. We don't know what they had talked about on the field. Um, so I, I don't know if he was expecting something different or um, I think you could probably speak better on that, honestly, because from what I saw, I was just like, I was just, just a bit confused. Just I mean, that that's what goes through my head initially, though. When something is that blatant, you're like, okay, something, some sort of miscommunication happened. I think that's what we're also talking about is like when you bring in a quarterback who hasn't been playing with these guys the whole entire season, like there's not going to be that chemistry. There's going to be miscommunications. There's going to be, yeah. you know, I thought you were going to do this. No, I thought you were going to do this. There's going to be that going on. And that's, yeah. I think that was the result of it. Yeah. I noticed that on the last drive, Oregon State's last drive too, where they tried to, uh, they tried to throw a deep, take a deep shot with with Trent Walker and Trent stopped at about the 20 and the ball went way over his head yeah and and, and like it just made me wonder were they even on the same page on that play because yeah i felt like walker was thinking one thing and ben was thinking something else and and you know, yeah. it was you know i i don't know much about offense and wide receivers and quarterbacks i do have a brother who played wide receiver, and I know every day after practice from 2018 to 2019, right, or 2020, whatever you want to say, um, every day after practice, he was with Jake Luton running routes. Every day. They're running routes. They're drilling it. They're getting each other's chemistry down. They're getting, I mean, this is what Isaiah did all the way to high school. Like in high school, he was doing this with our high school quarterback. 
And like, if I'm Ben, hey, everyone in the wide receiver room, if I'm throwing the ball to you, we're staying after practice. We're getting our chemistry down. You have to. Like, you got to get this chemistry down. And you got to be. You got to be able to recover from what you weren't able to get early on in the season, right? Yeah. Because he wasn't doing that early on in the season. Who Ben was throwing with probably after practice was it probably wasn't Trent Walker. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not there, right? But um, they're probably Trent Walker and all them. They're probably throwing with McCoy because that was their their quarterback, right? Um, so you've just got to you got to drill these things. You guys got to get in the room together. You got to brainstorm together. Um, you got to start building that chemistry because that was yeah. what's lacking. Um, well, kind of wrapping this up. Um, does it feel? I mean, does it feel hopeless, or do you? Are you can? Or, or and how do? You, well, let's go a different way. How, if you're Trent Bray and the coaches, how do you convince the team that you know there's still something to play for? I mean, I think you got to look at the facts. I think that game looked a lot worse on paper than than what it was. I think a lot that entire. I think you can boil that game down to self-inflicted wounds of not finishing on our, that's something we can control. That's it's, it's not like it's, it's uncontrollable. Everything that happened that game is very controllable. Like we're don't get down. Don't, I think that's gotta be the message is like, guys, this is controllable. We've got, we got nine, 10, 11. We got a few games left. Like we can get to this bowl game. And I think the bowl game is important to be honest for the health of this program the bowl game is important because you're going to build that chemistry you're going to build that brotherly bond you're going to build all this kind of stuff that's going to carry into next season so i think as coach bray athletic director like for the health of this program you got to get to a bowl game like this it does more than just add another stat to your stat book like it does more than add a win or a loss to your record like these bowl games could they build lifelong experiences that for the guys who are going to be on this 2025 Oregon State Beaver football team, it's going to matter. And these are going to be the guys that you know on this team this year that the guys next year who are new are going to look up to. They're going to look to for leadership. Um, yeah. So you've got to be, you just got to preach. Hey, control the controllables, and you're going to show clips in like it. Film is never as bad as you think it is, and it's never as good as you think it is. So as bad as we think this game was, they're going to pull up the film into the team meeting room, and they're going to show, like, look, if this guy just did this, it's a touchdown. If this block just happened correctly, it's a touchdown. It's a completely different narrative if X, Y, and Z happened. And when you break it down in film, you're able, that actually builds a lot of hope in you as a player. Like, okay, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. You yeah. Know? And it could go vice versa. It's not ever, ever as good as you think it is either. But then it's on. But it's then it's on the players to actually a believe that, and b go out on the field and actually make that block or or make that move or whatever whatever the coach pointed out was was lacking on a certain play. I mean that's I guess that's that might be the difference between a veteran team and a you know team that doesn't have a lot of veterans on it. Yeah, I mean, and it's all over the film. It's on special teams. Like, man, I remember sitting in on some special teams meetings, and I'm just, like, looking at this, and Coach Cooks is like, guys, if we get this block right here, this is a touchdown. Like, if – and it's the same for every position, every single play. Like, it's just like, man, if – like, Ben, this guy was wide open. If we would have saw this here, or, hey, if this guard would have would have passed – if this guard would have passed off the block to the tackle and the tackle – would have taken that block then ben would have been able to hit this crosser across the field and boom we got a first down rather than a sack right like i mean there's those plays are all over film and i believe when you break down they're breaking down the film right now what what time is it it's 1 12 on sunday yep they're in the team meeting room right now they're watching this film and they're 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 boiling over everything and i'm hoping what the what the goal is should be to show these guys like listen we control the controllables. We get to a bowl game, and that's got to be that's got to be your goal. You got to win. Yeah. Well, last thing, um, Air Force uh, is up next. It's a triple option type team. You guys ever face it? Did you ever face a, 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 a an offense like that in in college? 
Yeah. No, I mean, Air Force, this type, this type of offense is just kind of what we were just saying. It's like, we're not asking you to be a superstar. Do your job. If you are assigned the quarterback, stick with the quarterback. If you're assigned the running back, stick with the running back, right? If you're supposed to take on this blocker with your inside shoulder and keep your outside hand free, do that. And against these type of offenses, that's the biggest thing. It's discipline. Because that's what Air Force, Army, Navy, these are all military guys, right? They're all based off of discipline, doing their job, and just doing it at a very high level. And that's what the Beavers need to do. They need to do their job at a very high level and just do it consistently. Just do your job. That's it. And you you can you can stop this offense. Simple as that. I mean, it's not like yeah, Air Force is not having a good season, but they did they did end up seven game losing streak last night, beat Fresno State. So <sighs> it just yeah. feels like Oregon State can't catch a break right now. You, the one game where you feel like, oh, this is a get well game, and then they. Then Air Force goes out and lays thirty six on Fresno last night. So yeah, um, no, I'm not. so I I, mean, I don't know. What... I think at any at at all points of this season right now, honestly, there's there's no really kind of <laughs> give me games. You know where, where we're currently at. Um, no, no, at probably not. Season. So no. it's like you, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to scratch and claw for whatever when you get this for the rest of the season. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it for uh, this week's podcast. We'll we'll be back next week to see how the Beavers did at Air Force, and then then we're going to look at the final home game of the season. Uh, uh, the Washington State Cougars will be coming to Corvallis on uh, November twenty third. So we'll see you next week. Go Beavs. <laughs>